With the election quickly approaching, schools are becoming battlegrounds. What's being taught inside classrooms is pulling many voters to the polls. And a new police unit helping homeless people in Detroit. Paving the way for one unlikely friendship. And strong wind gusts moving out of the area this morning. We'll have a breezy end to the weekend with mostly sunny skies. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News starts right now. Well, good morning. It's 7 a.m. Sunday, November. What is today? November 6th? Mid-November. Mid 6th, right? 6th. Yes. Early yes. November. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We're two days away from the election. That's how I'm that, thinking right exactly. now. It's all that's on my mind. It is Th the That has been your focus all year. Yeah. You're like yes. just getting it, down. It really has. Now it we're really in the crunch has. time. You're like, I don't. time has no meaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News today. Uh, we, we are talking about those wind gusts from mm -hmm. yesterday because we're no longer in that wind advisory. We are talking about thousands of Metro Detroiters without power here. Right now, DTE crews are responding to a number of outages in our area. At last check, more than 20,000 people are still in the dark. About 884 crews are in the field working to get power restored right now. Brian, will workers be able to stay dry this morning? Pre and Grant, the answer to that is yes, although it is going to be a chilly start early this morning and no rain on the way today. We will see some sunshine as we head throughout the day as well. Tower cam over downtown Detroit this morning. We've kept a little bit of cloud cover in overnight last night and early this morning, starting off at 44 right now here in Detroit, as well as over in Howell, 45 right now over in Port Huron and 42 this morning, starting off over in Monroe. The wind speeds below 10 miles an hour sustained for everybody today, but I do think it will be a little breezy as we head throughout today, but compared to where we were this time yesterday morning, we're running anywhere from 10 to upwards of 20 to 25 degrees colder, but we're still going to warm things up above average into the 60s. And as we head into this afternoon with plenty of sunshine, 50s by lunchtime, mid 60s this afternoon, and then it's a temperature roller coaster all week long with colder weather on the way just in time for the end of the week heading into next weekend. I'll break down what you can expect in your complete full worn forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Brian. As voters get ready to head to the polls in just two days because it is November yes. 6th, education is one issue that many are focused on. Republican state legislators across the country introducing bills to restrict what is taught in the classroom. Those bills, especially regarding sexuality and gender identity. Our Megan Woods is diving into the movement for parents' rights in education and how it's impacting LGBTQ families. Megan? Well, the more controversial bill is out of Ohio, and that's where we start this story. Hear from a family who's um, out of Columbus, Ohio. Take a listen. Inside Bake Me Happy Bakery in Columbus, Ohio, the Pew family is making something from scratch. We wanted to have a family together. Letha and her wife, Wendy, are raising their 11-year-old daughter, Avery running a small business, active in local charities, and in school. And we thought we were okay. Until Republican state lawmakers started introducing a series of bills aimed at restricting what's taught in the classroom. The most controversial in Ohio, House Bill 616, that sought to ban concepts like critical race theory, along with any instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity from kindergarten through third grade. It's really a gut punch. Limiting it for older grades to what the state deemed age appropriate. Forced not to talk about it makes it seem like something shameful. To Aaron Baer with the Center for Christian Virtue, it's about parents' rights to choose what their kids are exposed to. Parents are the ones who are best positioned to decide the best educational environment for their kids. Ohio is not the only state putting this issue front and center. Restoring power back to parents. From Virginia to Florida, parents' rights in education has become a rallying call for the conservative movement. Parents are empowered in Florida. The top Republican in the U.S. House even making it a centerpiece of the party's new commitment to America. We will pass the Parents' Bill of Rights. Denzel Porteous directs the LGBTQ advocacy group Stonewall Columbus and sees schools as a microcosm where society's most complicated and combative struggles are playing out and being politicized. He's also a father of a kindergartner. My child should be seen when she walks into the classroom. She should not be pushed into the closet. She should not be discounted because of 
who her parents are. We should be creating spaces that make her feel safe to figure out who she is and to be a part of, uh, of defining a future that's inclusive and welcoming and accepting of a wide variety of people. On the other side of the debate, Bear believes discussions about sexuality and gender in school have gone too far, launching a powerful backlash. Really going to be one of those things that lasts for a long time uh, in terms of driving passion. He's pushing to make public school dollars follow students to any school of their choice in what's called a backpack bill. When a parent says, I don't like what you're teaching my kid, if you don't stop it, I'm taking them out and you're losing the money for them. Letha and Wendy Pugh feared that would strip public school funding and cut kids off from learning about different backgrounds. They may be different, but they're still okay. They're still really good people. Now with the midterms bearing down and schools are now a growing battleground, voters are looking for leaders to fight on their side in the culture wars. And when it comes to the Michigan ballot, there is a, a vary of topics, a variety of topics, um, including statewide, the governor races, but then also city council and uh, school board members. So if you need a little more background, we have that information on clickondetroit.com. There's a QR code on your screen at the bottom of the screen right now. You take your camera, open that camera phone and put it close to the screen and it will take you directly to that link. Back to you, Grant and Priya. Informative as always. Thank you so much, Megan. With only two days left for the election, a lot of people are going to want to be reading up on these races. Thank you so much. And in the gubernatorial race, both Governor Whitmer and Republican candidate Tudor Dixon making the most of their final hours of these campaigns. And our Jacqueline Francis reports the candidates are going full speed ahead and their message is to get out and vote. Just two days from Election Day and both gubernatorial candidates are moving full speed ahead. Their message, get out and vote. On the road again, Republican gubernatorial candidate Tudor Dixon's bus tour continues, making a stop in Holland Saturday morning, met by an enthusiastic crowd. He said, I think it's time for us to come together and say the things that we want. Though polling throughout the race has shown Dixon behind, she believes that will turn around on Election Day. We feel like those silent Republicans are really out there. You heard me talking about that today when we stop and people come up and they whisper, I'm voting for you. And I, I, I believe that those folks will come out, up, out to the polls and will be successful on Tuesday. Governor Gretchen Whitmer also fielding questions about polling during a rally in Detroit. Polling's crazy. I'm not paying attention to anything, Ken. The fact of the matter is we are three days out. We are crisscrossing the state to make sure people know how incredibly important this midterm election is. I say vote, you say big Gretch vote. Vote. With a lot on the line, the Democratic Party not taking any chances, bringing out the star power with actress Kerry Washington. And I'm here tonight because these candidates, these Democratic candidates from top to bottom, this ticket, they are standing up for those same rights. I'm here in Michigan with you because I believe in you having those rights. I want to support candidates who believe in your right to have a free and fair election and your right to make decisions about your body. We do want to remind you about our election guide. It will show you exactly what's on the ballot and where you can vote. Reporting in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. We got a lot more coming up for you this morning, but first we want to check on the weather. Yeah, Brian, what's the rest of our weekend looking like? Grant and Priya, definitely. Oh. Well, hi there. I didn't know I changed. Hey. <laughs> Colder temperatures. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. And still no winner in the record-breaking Powerball jackpot. Up next, see how high the prize has reached. Good morning, everybody. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Coming up in my consumer headlines, we have an election scam that you need to be aware of. Important information before you vote. That and also a big airbag recall. I'll see you in just a moment. 